Hello and welcome to Perspectives on PH. I'm Steve Highsmith. PAH-TV brings you up-to-date coverage of the latest abstracts presented at the 2012 American Thoracic Society International Conference held May 18th to the 24th, 2012. I would like to welcome Dr. Iwana Preston from Tufts Medical Center, Boston. Dr. Preston presented lipidomic analysis of plasma from patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, determination of circulating arachidonic acid metabolites. Welcome, Dr. Preston. Thanks, Steve. Glad to be here. Why was it important to evaluate the presence of eicosanoids in the lung of PAH patients? Well, eicosanoids are small lipid molecules that are formed from breakdown of a major lipid molecule called arachidonic acid, which sits on the membrane of all the cells. And we know that in patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, there's an abnormal balance of those eicosanoids. Uh, for many years, we've known that uh, the ratio between prostacycline, which is a vasodilator, a very important vasodilator in the lung vasculature, and thromboxane, which is a vasoconstrictor of the vasculature. So this ratio has been abnormal uh, with a preponderance of the vasoconstrictor thromboxane. So we propose to look more um, carefully at both prostacycline and thromboxane, as well as other uh, metabolites uh, derived from arachidonic acid and characterize their um, levels in pulmonary arterial hypertension patients. Doctor, could you go over the methods and results of your study for our viewers? This is how we started the study. We uh, looked at plasma patients uh, of PAH uh, and we had uh, four groups. We had idiopathic PAH patients who were naive treatment, uh, of, for treatment, so they were not exposed to special pH-targeted therapies. We also had scleroderma-related pH patients also not on therapy, and we had those two groups uh, on therapy, and we looked at uh, levels of different eicosanoids and compared them with uh, those levels in uh, the plasma of healthy controls. And we found very interesting results. First of all, the ratio between prostacycline and thromboxane was very low, significantly lower in treatment-naive pH patients compared to controls. And on treatment, this ratio seemed to improve. So that suggests that uh, the therapies that we have available uh, decrease the level of vasoconstrictors and influence positively the levels of vasodilator prostacycline. But more than that, uh, what we found novel was that other eicosanoids called HEATs were abnormally elevated in the plasma of treatment-naive pH patients compared with controls, uh, much more so than the uh, thromboxane. And these levels uh, were significantly improved uh, on tre with treatment. So while this is mostly a descriptive study in trying to assess different levels of pro- and anti-inflammatory and pro- and anti-constrictive uh, molecules uh, derived from the arachidonic acid, uh, we, will, uh, we are planning to look more, more in more detail to understand how these molecules track with treatment and if we can identify in the future one or more uh, serologic biomarkers from these molecules to, to uh, understand uh, the uh, disease progression and also the response to therapy. What are the clinical and research implications of eicosanoid presence in the lung? So they seem to be a marker of disease. Uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension, we now understand that is uh, a state of altered lipid metabolism and a pro-inflammatory state. And these molecules are a surrogate marker, um, or at least we think they're a surrogate marker for the disease state. So we do not have biomarkers uh, for pulmonary arterial hypertension other than brain-natriuretic peptide 
to this date. So looking for uh, markers easy to identify in the blood, in the peripheral blood of these patients to understand the disease state and to track their response to therapy is crucial for our future uh, treatment options for these patients. Finally, Dr. Preston, what inferences can be taken from the PAH-treated patients? Well, the fact that all these lipid molecules go towards the right direction with therapy suggests that, uh, that these therapies act at the level of the inflammatory um, uh, molecules in PAH. And there is further work to be done to identify uh, if there is a tight correlation between uh, parameters of disease severity, such as hemodynamics, and the level of these eicosanoids. Uh, but this is a question of future, future studies. Thank you, Dr. Preston, for this insightful analysis. And that's Dr. Iwana Preston from Tufts Medical Center. Thank you to all of the experts who contributed to this edition of Perspectives on PH. We look forward to seeing you here at PAH-TV as we cover the latest news in pulmonary hypertension. Thank you.